Has Christianity always been one of the religions in the world to you? Oh, hallelujah. Christianity is not a religion. Neither is it a joining of a church and doing the Christian things like praying and giving and so on. Hallelujah. Christianity is the outworking of God's own kind of life received into the spirit of a man. Whoa! This divine life in the heart of a man makes him righteous, keeps him healthy, divinely guarded in life, prosperous and victorious. It gives you the ability to enjoy intimate fellowship with the Father and have dominion on this earth. Hallelujah! This is what awaits you if you will wholeheartedly believe that Jesus is the Son of God raised from the dead and personally confess him as the Lord of your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Join Dr. David Bindon on the Good Life Devotion every Monday to Friday on this channel and receive truth that will usher you into the Good Life experience. Wow, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It is such a joy once again to welcome you to today's special episode of your favorite Good Life Devotion. This is your center for biblically authoritative teachings where you receive truth from the word of God to bring you into that amazing life that the Almighty Father ordained for you. I've been reminding you that life wasn't meant to be the way you are seeing it today with all the chaos, confusion, hatred, bitterness, and all kinds of animosity. No. God is a very organized and supreme person. He doesn't create things in a disorder. You need to find out why things are the way they are today and how you can live about them. Instead of drawing a conclusion that this is how life is, you'll be a victim of life. But God doesn't want you to live in that state. That is why he sent us your way. Having revealed to us the truth about life to bring them to you on the good life devotion. This is why if you have landed on this channel or this devotion, make sure that you don't keep it to yourself. Pray into its spread and coverage of the whole world. Recommend it to other people and make sure you pay to get it to other media platforms. Because this is the voice of God going to the whole world now to ripen the body of Christ for the coming of the Lord Jesus and to effect the greatest soul harvest into the kingdom before that time. And mature the church to begin to exert the reign of Christ on the earth just before the church is taken away. Praise God. So if you have just joined us, relax because you have connected to a source of spiritual nourishment that you never regret. What I'm sharing with you is from what we call the Emancipator. It's a daily devotional that comes to us in monthly editions. You can download a free copy from our website every month. You can also call us and have the hard copies delivered to you wherever you are. You can use them as soul winning and evangelism tools. Many are using them all around the world and they are making impact in the kingdom. Be one who shares the truth of God's word with this simple tool of God's word. That's what I'm sharing from with you from right we'll deal with the subject of the fatherhood of god and we started by looking at the fact that god is your father if you are a son of god if you are one who is in christ don't live as an orphan look at things from the perspective of the word god is your father you are not fatherless god is the father of everything that's a general sense but for you God is your father because he gave birth to you in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this was his predestined plan for all mankind before Adam was even created. The issue of being in Christ is not something that is happening after the fall of Adam. No, something that oh, after Adam fell, God became confused and is sitting and thinking, brooding. Then when he said, oh, let me send somebody called Jesus, then through him you come and die and you be redeemed. No, no, God, it was not. The coming of Jesus was predestined. And that his coming was predestined is not a proof that Adam's fall was also predestined because the dying of Jesus was not predestined. His coming was predestined, but dying was not predestined. Dying became necessary because Adam fell. If Adam hadn't fallen, the world would have taken shape but without death. That is another day's discussion. Make sure you don't miss the new creation conference. Wow. So we said we, we, we learned that and we moved on to the second episode and we, we studied that our father is God. So not just the father, okay, God is my father, but this person that is my father is really God. And we looked at what that meant. Four things. Make sure you get that episode and watch. We are going to move forward today to walk with God as your father. 
Now that you know that God is your father and your father is God, relate with him. Walk with him as your father. Now, before we move forward into that, I want to remind all esteemed ministers of the gospel of Jesus. Are you an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, a pastor, a teacher, or a minister of God in any capacity? Our father has set a meal for us to eat and be refocused and be nourished and to be relevant in what he is doing so that when he appears very soon in the skies, we will meet him with gladness and joy and not with shame. It is set at the relevant ministry ministers conference coming up on the 12th of November at the National Theater of Ghana. The minister of God, ensure that you register for that conference and be there. Your life cannot be the same. If you are anywhere outside the city of Accra, travel from wherever you are and make it for that conference. If you call our team, they can make arrangements with accommodation with you. And you can attend the New Christian Conference together with the relevant ministry ministers conference. Make sure you are there. Registration will round off at the end of this month so that we can focus on the New Christian Conference itself. So don't procrastinate it anymore. We have just about a week or so to round off the registration. If you haven't registered, do that right after this episode. Well, before we zoom in on what we have to discuss today, I wish you a word of prayer. Daddy, we love you and we celebrate you for the privilege to have access to your truth and the ability to, be, to bring it forth to the whole world. Thank you now and forevermore. Amen. Wow. So walk with God as a father. Our main scripture today is from the book of Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1. It says that, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Be ye followers of God. As dear children. Oh my God. Be ye followers of God as dear children. In other words, be ye imitators of God as dear children. The conclusion is said that you are already a dear child of God. And we told you, for those of us in Christ, being a dear child of God is really a big deal. Bible says in Ephesians 1, if you go to verse 6, that we are in Christ, we have been accepted in the beloved. The beloved son of God is now Jesus and his body. You are part of that beloved son. So God calls you dear children. He calls you a dear child. Why? You were born by him through the truth of his word. Not a child of God in the general sense of he created you. So as dear children, he says that be imitators of your father. Think like him. Talk like him. Act like him. Imitate him. Work the way he works. That's what it means. Because you are now his dear child. Every father trains the son into maturity to be as he is. That's every responsible father. And every good son follows the father to want to be like him in maturity. So he says that, be ye therefore followers of God as dear Children, praise God. Oh, hallelujah. What we have here today is that now that you know God is your father and your father is God, you must now learn to walk with him as such. You must learn to walk with God as such. You know, hmm. The challenge of many Christians is not because their father is limited or they cannot enjoy the best of life. One of the challenges that a lot of God's sons and daughters have is the challenge of walking with God as if he's a mere human. It's as if he's a mere human. Imagine, imagine, just imagine what happened over the past one year where there is a problem in the whole world. And there is a child of God who is living in fear. Thinking that something will kill him. Maybe there is a virus and it will kill him. He will surely die. If he gets it. Why? Not because his father cannot do anything about that particle. But because he does, he's not walking with his father as if the father is God. It's like those who are even afraid that even in the house of God, something will jump into them. They were not walking with God as a father. 
They were not living as though their father is God. So imagine you were the father of the house and there are a lot of mosquitoes in your hall, your living room, and your children are there and you have seen a lot of mosquitoes just flying around and they are biting your children. You are just going to be sitting down and say, oh, let them, let, let, let these mosquitoes discipline my children. In your own house, is that what they're going to do as a father? In your presence, you will not do anything about these mosquitoes. You will allow them to bite all your children and inject diseases into them. Is that what is going to happen? Somebody say, if, so then why didn't God do something? Uh huh. That's a good question to ask. But it wasn't the inability of God as a father. It was because the sons never worked with him as a father. It is high time sons and daughters of God began to walk with God as one who is their father. A lot of people relate with God as a general creator. And in that perspective, he is so far away, so unpredictable, they can't tell whether you come in for them or not come in for them. So they are really unsure. And that's why they, they can't walk in faith. They have more faith in humans than faith in God. You see, they feel like, oh, I can't see God. Let me be serious because I don't know whether he'll be there or not. And yet, there are physical things they don't see. That they, they believe in those things more than the God that they don't see. So their issue is not because they cannot believe in what is invisible. Their issue because they have not learned to walk with God as their father. God doesn't want you to relate with him as a far creator somewhere. If you are in Christ... God wants you to relate with him as one who gave birth to you. This is why you need to be at the New Creation Conference. Your understanding of the fatherhood of God must change. There are a lot of God's sons who are still having in their dominant thinking their, their father as their earthly father. But that earthly father is the father of the human that was in you. If you are in Christ, you are a new creation. The Bible said that the old man died. The you now, you, you were produced by God in the gospel. And God is now your direct father. These truths can only dawn on you when you keep on hearing the message about the new creation. This is why you can't miss the new creation this year. Because as long as your understanding about who you are as a new creation is not heightened, you will not be able to separate yourself from the humanistic thinking and you always continue to have your, your father as the earthly father. And as long as that is it, the only fatherly care you can get is human. And you'll be unable to tap into the unlimited reserve of divine parenting that is available for you in Christ. Walk with God as a father. Not as a distant creator somewhere that is impersonal, that cannot be touched, that cannot hear. And that is why a lot of people like to cry and beg, I'll come there very soon. Because they think that, oh, God is far away. If only you can show remorse. You know, in the Old Testament, they will, they will put on sackcloth and tear their clothes, you know, then afflict themselves. So people still think it is the same today. It was not their afflictions that changed God. God cannot be changed. It was their acting on a principle. It was ordained that if anybody did something wrong and became uh, 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 remorseful or repented in his heart, but their repentance was demonstrated by wearing sackcloth and all that. It wasn't the physical wearing the sackcloth that changed anything. You can wear sackcloth for 15 years. If in your heart nothing changed, nothing is going to change in the spirit. That's why at the point that they were offering sacrifices and do many things, your sacrifices are an abomination because they were now trying to use methodology to get God to produce results instead of heart. So if you don't know God as your father and you start crying and you start doing things, you, you just be like somebody who is about to get drowned and just trying to hold on to something to work. It doesn't work that way. God is a person. He is God. He is your father. And you must relate with him as such. Have you been living as a kind of orphan? One that you pray all right, but God seems so far. 
this message is your answer. There are people who think that when they pray, their prayers hit, hit the ceiling and go and come down. <laughs> no, that's not God. He said, Father, that now that you are born again, you are so one with him that even your clothes are farther away from you than God. He's close, so your prayer doesn't need to go through a ceiling. Oh, praise God. I walk with God as my father. I cause that grace to rest upon you wherever you are. Receive understanding to see God as your father. Receive understanding to walk with him as your father. The issue is, as much as he's relating with you as a son, if you don't recognize him as a father, you will not be able to take advantage of what he's doing to you as a son. And so he's dropping something from here for you. You don't even know he's doing it because you are, you are looking at the other side. Like what he told us in Matthew 6.33. He said, you, you want to get yourself clothed, right? You want to live under a shed, right? You want some things to feed on, right? Okay, he says, look, my way is be busy about the kingdom and its righteousness. And then all these things will come. But if he said, no, Father, I don't know you like that. Let me be busy about how to eat, how to clothe myself, where to live. You are not going to get a thing that way because that's not how the Father is working. But if you are working with him as a father, you have learned to hear his voice and know the way he works and you have been aligned. And what others are struggling for, you just pick them up as things that the father is doing in your life. Why is it so important that as a child of God, you learn to walk with God as your father? I'm going to go in a short break, one out of ten. I'll show you one or two important reasons why now that you know that God is your father, and in addition, your father is God. You must now relate with him. You must now walk with him as such. You must now walk with him as such. I'm, I'm going to do that when I return from this short break. Hallelujah. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Praise the Lord. Wow. Why must you learn to walk with God as a father? Number one, learning to walk with God as a father removes the attitude of beggarliness from a child of God. People who do not know God as their father, and they don't know that their father is God, and they don't walk with him as father, always wonder how things will turn out for them. They are always living a life of beggarliness. And so their lives are so tied to their employer that if you take away their employer, ah, you have finished them. Because for all their lives, they are so dependent on their employer. And that is what some employers are taking advantage of in these days. They say, if you don't do this thing, I won't employ you. Or if you don't have this thing in your body, you won't work with me. A lot of people are getting confused all around the world because employer says, if I don't have this, you will not employ me. Who is that employer? Do you know your father? <laughs> if you know your father and you work with him as God, if you know your father is God and you work with him as a father, you will know that that employer is employed by your father. So, because many sons of God don't know and they are not working with God as a father, they have made men their fathers. They have made systems their fathers. And they become so dependent on these things that these things can now control their lives to the core. Because they are not working with God as a father. Just take a scripture like this. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians um, chapter 3. Let me take it from oh, the 20th verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Verse 21, it says that, Therefore let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. Did you see what your father is telling you? Don't, don't have this 
pompous thing. Oh, I, I know that minister. I know that president. I know that global leader. I know that. They said, don't, don't glory in men. These are men. He says, all things are yours. Why did he say this? Because your father is the one who owns everything. And the Bible said that you are a joint heir with Christ, who is the heir of all that God has created. Which means all that that person you are trusting owns, you own that thing plus him. Imagine you are thinking this way. How could an employer intimidate you? How could somebody intimidate you? So if you don't do this, I will sack you. Sack who? When they sack you from that job, they have sack grace. That will be the collapsing, the downturn of that organization. Because if you knew who you were, you were the preservative of that thing. Oh, praise God. Praise God. So if you walk with God as your father, you will not be moved by the intimidations of men. Because you know that all things are yours. You will not be beggarly. So there are Christians who are actually beggarly towards God. Oh, they have to pray and plead. Oh, God, do this for me. Oh, God, look at my children and bless me. God, no, no, no. If God is your father, there are some things you don't beg. No one that was in the mother's womb told the mother to go to maternity, to go for antenatal care. It, the, the baby did not pray to the mother. By just being a baby in her womb, the woman went for antenatal care for the baby. While the baby was still crawling, the woman was searching for school for the child. The child didn't say, mother, do this for me. There are some things that are yours if you walk with God as a father. Number two, if you walk with God as a father, it takes away the feeling of being unworthy. I'm not qualified. No, you see this in a lot of Christians' prayers. Prayers that are so beggarly, they, and it's as if the more you make yourself unqualified, the more God will come through for you. You know, God, receive our offering. We are unqualified servants. Receive our communion. We are unqualified servants. You know, just being beg That attitude doesn't, God is unhappy with that. There's no king who is excited that his children will always come to him in a beggarly perspective. It is not so in the scriptures. If you think that is it, it's because you don't know the truth. Learn to walk with God as your father. Children don't need to have any other qualification to come to their father except that they were born. The moment you are born, you are always qualified. Maybe I should read the scripture to you. Colossians chapter 1. I'll read from the NIV. It says that, Colossians chapter 1 says that, Colossians 1, 12, And giving joyful thanks to the father, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people, in the kingdom of light. Did you see that? He says, the father has qualified you. You will never qualify more than your qualification in Christ. Because many don't know where they are sitting. We had a, a teaching recently called Seven Days of Word Buffet. Make sure you get those messages. You will know where you are sitting in God. Qualification is not something you are thinking about if you know the truth in God. You were born qualified in Christ. You are actually the dream of God realized. So a Christian who is begging God, oh God, we, we don't deserve and just do this for us. It's, it doesn't move anything. The days of ignorance are past. God winked. Now we are in the days of truth. Learn to walk with God as a father. It will take away all kinds of beggarliness, all kinds of feeling inadequate and unqualified. You were born qualified in God. Finally, because of time. If you walk with God as a father, it will impart to you the confidence of fellowship with him. Because people see God as such a big, wicked man or terrible person who is just looking for their mistakes to knock them. They don't have confidence in fellowship. And that's why they cannot pray. And that's how come the devil tosses them to and fro. And they are always living in fear of demons and evil. But Hebrews 4 says what? It says, come boldly. Come boldly to the throne of grace. And when he says, come boldly, it is not about God is somewhere you are now coming to him on a daily basis. He said, approach. Have this kind of approach to God. When you want to pray, when you want to fellowship, let come in confidence. Oh, glory to God. What a joy we enjoy in God that many don't know. Learn to work with God as a father. Just look at relationship of humans and their children in the right context, not where parents are irresponsible, but in the right context. And you will see a bigger picture for how God relates with you. 
Your father is God. God is your father. Walk with him as a father. Not as a terrible creator somewhere that is too far away from you and dangerous to you. If you walk with him as one who gave birth to you, you will enjoy your walk with him and your Christianity will be so rich and full of greatness. A lot don't know this beautiful and buoyant Christianity. All they know of is some squeezing of self, always living in a dry manner. That is not of God. That doesn't please God. They hate it when one person is living in the fullness of God and they think that person is a sinner. No. If you know truth, the truth will make you enjoy God and enjoy life and live in a buoyant life. This is why God has sent the good life devotion your way. I thank God for your life and that you have watched. I pray for you that your paradigm will shift from seeing God as a far person, unreachable person, a terrible person, to one that gave birth to you by his own will in Christ Jesus. And begin to address him as such and talk with him as such. And I cause you to be ushered into that abandoned life. That is available to you in Christ Jesus. If you're watching us on this episode and you have not yet received Jesus, it means you are still at the general level of God being my father because he created you. But for humans, God ordained that apart from being your creator, he will adopt you to become his own bona fide son. One that he, he has given birth to through the gospel in Jesus Christ. That's why he said, as many as received Jesus, he gave them the power to become sons of God. These are sons of God which are born by God. That can happen now in your life. You can become a new creature now. You can become one that can call God your father and walk with him as a father. How? Receive Jesus. How does that happen? Believe that he died and rose again. And as we speak now, he's Lord of all. And declare his lordship over your life. And you will be born of God and be a son of God right now. You're going to do that. Say this after me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, with all my heart, I believe. That you died and rose again. And by your resurrection, you made eternal life available. I receive this eternal life now into my spirit by saying, Jesus is Lord. And by this declaration, I am born again. Praise God. Truly, you are born again. Make sure you continue to follow the good devotion on a consistent basis and receive truth. That will help you to grow in Christ. Wherever you are on the surface of the earth, make sure you get a Bible, teaching and practicing church, and get planted in it, and continue to grow in Christ, because Jesus is going to show up very soon, one of these days, in the skies for his church. But till then, we are going to come away on this same subject matter of the fatherhood of God from another light. Till then, life is good. Enjoy. Thank you for joining today's episode of your favorite Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Binder. The Good Life Devotion is proudly brought to you by friends and partners of the Final Global Movement. For more information on how to become a partner, call us on 055-792-7744 or log on to our website, finalglobalmovement.org. Become a partner today and contribute to the global spread of God's message for the now. Follow us on our various social media handles and you will be blessed. Don't miss the Good Life Devotion on the channels displayed on your screen at the scheduled times. Till we come your way with the next episode of the Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bender. Life is good. Enjoy.